everybody has made a bad choice. And because you stressed out, you go change your gender. Because you want to try something new. Once you do it, you can't go back. The more you throw stuff at kids before they developed, that's indoctrination. Oh, brother, here we go. What a way to start. When Jubilee created Middle Ground, the intention was to uncover humanity and empathy shared among strangers with opposing beliefs. Whether your political beliefs are on the left or the right, we all exist within our own echo chambers. So for this episode, we partnered with Ground News and created a test that can analyze your news sources and show you their biases. The participants of this episode agreed to take the quiz and share their results. We encourage you to do the same. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Cancel culture is a good thing. We have the freedom to say what you want, but everyone else has the freedom to respond and cancel you if you say something that is racist, yeah. homophobic, transphobic, etc. Cancel culture is definitely good in the means of like... Dude, I'm not gonna stop streaming to like figure out if we're gonna go buy a truck today or not, Marat. It's just like not happening currently, okay? Okay, I, I, I just like, you're being ridiculous. They're like yelling at me from the living room. They're like, come on, like, what are we doing? It's like, no, I'm gonna stream today. Um, Deplatforming people who are spreading very hateful messages. What is your opinion on Trump being canceled on Twitter? When yeah. you go so. onto Twitter or whatever, you check the, I accept the, you know, guidelines. Oh God, okay, this is gonna be terrible. Okay, here, here. Good this stuff. Is, okay, let me just bring something up, okay? As a quote unquote victim to cancel culture, more than every single person that has ever cried about cancel culture, okay? Someone whose livelihood has been threatened not that long ago, as a matter of fact, like recently. There is in cream. Recently. Two months. I will tell you two things, okay? There's two different kinds of cancel culture, deplatforming, and like whatever people think is cancellations or cancel culture itself, okay? Deplatforming is a successful way to to actually stop further misinformation Woohoo. from occurring. Cancel culture is not, okay? Cancel culture or whatever the fuck people think is cancel culture, whether they're pro or anti, and most people are anti, okay? is not a real concept. It's just like people fucking crying, manufacturing outrage, and trying to get you banned. You need to do a lot of horrible stuff, and you need to have deranged, dedicated, pathologically obsessed, stalker andy's up your asshole like i do to even get the real cancel culture which is just like uh a, a fucking seven day ban for saying something as uh as My innocuous or as, as insignificant as no. right so even in that end we're back to fifty three thousand subscribers fucking that's what i started off when i i got uh originally when i got banned i lost ten thousand subs and we already fucking pushed past it not real not a real thing, okay? Um, everybody hates it. You don't have to say you're pro cancel culture, okay? Like Dave Chappelle, lol, great example. Dave Chappelle's a great example of the the not real aspect of cancel culture. What the fuck? Cancel culture is when my fucking Same ISP like claps my ass cheeks. Sad. You see that? Dave Chappelle's a great example of the the non realness of cancel culture. Okay, why? Why? Reddit is down. Yeah, Marat pulled the plug on Reddit. Because Dave Chappelle got a $20 million uh, special. Okay, Netflix protected him and then actually fired Six the person who was like mainly responsible for the internal uh, uh, organization. Like, so if Dave Chappelle is your example of cancel culture, you're a fucking psycho. Okay? It's not real. There are better examples than Dave Chappelle, honestly, as far as, like, cancel culture goes. Most people, if they have the willingness to, they can rise above the quote-unquote cancellation, especially if they have a big enough audience or dedicated community of followers. Someone said Harvey Weinstein. That's not Today cancel culture. Sentence. That's the fucking law. Okay? That's you routinely violating the law and going to jail for it. That's a crime, okay? 
There is a fucking difference. Stop seeing everything from the lens of cancel culture. I've made jokes about this. I feel like conservatives literally think cancel culture is when, uh, or conservatives use cancel culture so much that they consider abortion to be cancel no, culture. Keep up the tank. You know, Keep abortion they think up. is murder, but cancel culture is a more powerful way to recognize that because it's a more powerful uh, statement than even murder. So they'll literally be like, abortion is cancel culture for the babies. So, a couple things. Cancel culture can only happen, I guess, or deplatforming or like serious losses can only happen if you do something that is completely at odds with your community that you've cultivated and your followers and your fan base, okay? But notice how we're talking about followers and fan base and all this other shit. That's because this is only a concept that impacts celebrities and people in positions of power and prominence. You can get cancel cultured at your place of work any day, okay? Any hour. Your boss can be like, I want to fuck your wife. That's why I'm going to fire you. Canceled. Okay? You can wear a t-shirt that your boss didn't like. You can uh, have finance, or you can have to stay home. You, you can want to stay home on a day where he wants you to come in. Okay? Your employment is at will. At the whims of your boss. That's not cancel culture, though. That's something else, right? That's like justifiable firings, right? And that's the only reason why we talk about cancel culture. The reason why we talk about fucking cancel culture all the time is because it's celebrity shit. That's it. And it's a way to make money. Please. The community guidelines, I agree to follow them, and he didn't follow them, so Twitter has the right to take him off the app. And for people that might make the counter-argument that Twitter is biased and will only cancel right-wing politicians, that's not true at all. Twitter and other forms of social media have canceled left-wing activists. There is an equal balance on both sides. That's not an equal balance, Ritwick. What the fuck are you saying? Oh my god, these liberal teens. Oh my god, where do they find these guys? Do they... These do not watch... These teens do not watch me, okay? No shot. These are not the teens I've been able to reach out to, okay? Homie said both sides, you know, there's a, there's an equilibrium, you know, you canceled Donald Trump who literally fucking tweeted, we will bomb your cultural artifacts. Okay. He said, we will bomb your cultural landmarks, which is actually terrorism. Okay. That is just quite definitionally the definition of terrorism and didn't get fucking canceled for it. And comparing that to like, you know, some uh, boycott, divest and, uh, divestment and, and sanctions on Israel activists saying, uh, you know, Palestinians are human beings and getting fucking clapped is psychotic, okay? Average house on viewers in their 30s is not true. You brought up canceling him off Twitter. Jesus. I'm sorry, I disagree. When the Taliban Oh yeah, Mike! You fucking you tell these little kids, all right? These fucking little kids, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yes. Yes. Daddy, get in, get in there. Social media, but an ex-president can't. <laughs> there is something wrong with that. Did the Taliban violate community guidelines? It doesn't I, matter. I, I think it matters to Twitter what their community guidelines are. That's why they banned Trump, because Trump violated community guidelines. That's what every platform has, whether it be TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. The Taliban stones people because they're gay. If they've done that and they've posted videos of stoning gay people, I agree, they should be removed, and that 100%. is fundamentally wrong. No, it's the, not the problem is they're smart enough to not do that. Well, well the problem yeah. yeah, just say yes. Just say yes. It's so dumb. Also, the Taliban is now the acting government, is the operational acting government of Afghanistan. Guess what? You know who put them there? Donald Trump and the American administration. What the fuck are you complaining about? It is literally insignificant whether or not the Taliban can fucking tweet. Okay? And also, secondary cell phone. You literally just admitted that the Taliban is smarter at using social media than the fucking president, dude. Yeah, that's true, by the way. That is actually true. They are actually better at following fucking community guidelines while being the Taliban. Trump's the president wasn't that. smart enough to yeah. not do that, so I guess. If I'm an American and I have to vote between this person and this person, I need equal access to both of them to decide what's right. Bro, you could be a Klansman. You could say you hate black people. That's not my job to police your language. I can't accept. Oh my 
Yeah, conservative parent, of course. You can be a Klansman. Dude, what is happening, dude? Like, goddamn. You can be a Klansman, he said. Yeah, totally, man. That's, that seems like a good idea. Which, by the way, Klansmen are on fucking Twitter, okay? Richard Spencer, David Duke, Nick Fuentes. There's like literal fucking neo-Nazis that are openly neo-Nazi on Twitter. I expect everybody to love me and think the way I think. All y'all think different. I mean, that's totally dope. But the fact that you want somebody removed because they think differently, that, that could be you one day. Do you think freedom of speech is something that still exists? I love, I love the black conservative father being like, I need to understand. I need to get a better understanding of what the Klansman is saying. Like, why? What, what, are, you, what are you gonna understand, dude? He just hates you. That's it. He thinks you're inferior. Like, what, what is, if he can fucking tweet about, like, I don't know, uh, the latest uh, Netflix TV show or some shit, you're gonna, like, you wanna hear David Duke's approach to Squid Games? Is that, is that how you'll get a better grip on, on reality? Is that what's going on? in America. We do have aspects of freedom of speech. Like you can't go into a movie theater and yell fire. So obviously there are limits of freedom of speech, but they're picking and choosing who they're silencing and who they're letting talk. If people react negatively to what you say, it goes both ways. You right. can't just say sure. that, oh, they can't. I, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Absolutely. America is becoming less and less safe. I'll leave this to you guys. <laughs> so I have a lot of friends that um, I've been in the military for the last 20 years because they refused to get vaccinated. They told me that they would be dishonorably just discharged. We're disgusting, dude. I, I, I really do. I can't believe I'm about to say this is like such a hedonist who lives in the lap of luxury and all that. But we are literally due for like some conflict, you know, we're constantly fucking crying about like <laughs> my army friends. Oh, we're. Things are getting way worse. Oh, they want to get a vaccine. Like, oh my God. I've said this a million times, but it bears repeating. Conservatives have always been, you know, SJWs for conservative causes, but it somehow comes across as way fucking worse. Maybe because I at least understand and I am like empathetic to the causes that uh, rad libs cry about. Uh, because it's like empathetic for the most part. And it's about like, you know, civil liberties and stuff. Uh, at least the underlying motivator is civil liberties and equality. Whereas conservatives cry about like in the exact same way, by the way, the dumbest shit. They're just like, I, the military is taking vaccines. They're getting, mm, they're getting vaccinated it's like dude you don't know anything about the military i guess like what the fuck are you talking about they've always gotten vaccinated how is the military getting vaccinated making the country more dangerous there is just like 11 different parts of this argument that i i need to assess reassess and dismantle to to be able to to like find anything meaningful uh in what he is saying how is the american military first and foremost making this country a more safe space dude what's going on it's the hard. door knockers they're actually fucking making the country safe because uh i don't know they're they're going out and like uh, drone striking fucking 14 year olds in pakistan or i don't know giving pedophile warlords bags of fucking cash in afghanistan is that how they're making this country safer is that how we got safer in this country by, uh, I don't know, doing a number of different things and like arming fucking violent paramilitaries because they're against socialism in Latin American countries that ended up doing genocides and massacres? Is that how we made the country safer? Shut the fuck up. And then on top of that, even if you do believe the military actually is making the country safer, why in the ever loving fuck would you be like, oh, them getting vaccines are actually uh, a bad thing? Like, what the fuck do you mean? They get shot with like a million different things, okay? They sold their soul and their physical body to the American government, dumbass, okay? Being extra protected in the form of a vaccine is only a good thing if you're a conservative who fucking believes that, you know, the American military is saving this country. Charged or kicked out of the military. I just believe we're, we're losing a lot of good servicemen with the current situation that we're in right now. A lot of police officers are down. Um, crime is up all over. When police aren't there, we're murdering each other at a really high rate. Police are- Everything he said is just wrong. Notice how Jubilee never fucking adds Wikipedia links to what conservatives ever say. That's because 
He pulled that shit out of his ass, okay? Cops are not fucking quitting en masse. You just saw a couple TikToks and your brain immediately said, uh, yeah, cops are leaving. That's not a real thing. This is why it's really annoying to listen to conservatives talk, right? It's very entertaining, but it's also very annoying. Because even in the world that they exist in, where like cops are ultimately good and we need more cops and like as though, you know, the belief that like having more policing is actually going to make a community safer. Even if you exist in that universe, the facts are still we wrong. Did. But at least because uh, cops have not uh, withered away. The only reason, the largest reason for less cops in 2021 versus 2020 is COVID. That's it. They're hogs. They don't get vaccinated. They die to fucking COVID. That's it. Okay. They're not quitting the police force. So even that premise is fucking faulty and broken. Then the secondary premise that's faulty and broken is crime is infesting these uh, states, these, these cities. Not true. Not only have cops not fucking quit en masse because of the vaccination shit, crime is not fucking increasing in a, in a unique capacity, okay? That's also false. And lastly, um, wait, what was, what was the other thing? He was like talking about fucking vaccination. Crime is increasing. What was the other thing that he was talking about? Holy shit. I'm like, there's so much police shit. police aren't there, we're murdering each other at a really high rate. Right police are in those neighborhoods the because the homicide rate is high. Y'all can run around talking about police all you want, but I challenge any of these liberal kids to spend two weeks in the environment I grew up in, and I promise your perspective will change. The one advantage we have about being older... <laughs> He's like, you'll be just as racist. <laughs> you'll be even more racist, bro. Victory hand. You, you go to Crenshaw, you will be so much more racist, dude. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. We've been through a threat or two. And of course, you don't notice the rising crime because you live in a $3 million mansion. Hey, you fucking idiot uh, named Base Joe Mansion. All of those conversations that revolve around crime happening are happening in my backyard. They're literally happening like you. fucking one block down the street from me. Okay, so you're actually wrong. And also, it doesn't matter where I live. I'm looking at the fucking data. And the data says... The narrative that the media is cooking up and the narrative that the cops are cooking up is fucking wrong. So not only are you false on the anecdote side because I literally live in it, okay? But you're also false on the empirical side as well. So which one is it, motherfucker? People come at me with the anecdotes and I'm like, dude, I literally live here. What are you talking about? Like, I live walking distances some of these fucking areas that they're talking about. I live in West Hollywood. Numbers can lie and liars can figure. Good one. No shot. You're pretending you live in a bad neighborhood. Please just shut the fuck up. Hey, dumbass. Nobody gives a fuck in the media when crime happens in poor neighborhoods. They only care when the fucking retail storefronts are broken. Okay? They only care when crime reaches into wealthy neighborhoods. I'm saying I live in the wealthy neighborhood. They literally mention every fucking day in the news. I'm not saying I live in a bad neighborhood or a poor neighborhood. I'm quite literally saying that the media narrative that West Hollywood and Melrose in this area is actually a bad neighborhood now because of crime is fucking false. And I'm giving you the anecdote that it's false from my personal lived experience. I'm doing bodies and fucking spaces. And I'm also giving you the empirical data as well. Show data. I've done it a million times. You can go fucking watch my YouTube video on California crime and Los Angeles uh, uh, crime rates. Okay. And our enemies, you know, like China, the Communist Party in China, they're laughing at us. Our enemies you know, in the... Russia's like, we don't need to do much. They're going to screw it up on their own. We need to get the help of our younger people that haven't been through a threat before uh, to realize a lot of what's going... What threat have you lived through? What threat have you lived through? You live through nothing. You live in America. What threat have you lived through? Lol, neither have you. Is that... Oh, you're talking about him? Yeah, exactly. You are the biggest threat. And he's not wrong about like China laughing at us. And they should. They 100% should. All of these other countries that are growing should 100% laugh at America. And many do. Okay. Our allies laugh at us. There's plenty of Euro uh, cucks in here that are making fun of us on a daily basis in here. Right. 
And they're laughing at us because we're number one in all the worst shit. Number one in fucking mass shootings. Number one in gun violence. Number one in, in medical debt. Number one in the number of prisoners. Number one in heart disease. Like... Number two in obesity. Mexico sometimes kicks our ass, or uh, I think American Samoa. Number one in COVID deaths. All of our number ones are fucking dog shit. The reason why the rest of the world laughs at us is not because, like, we're not strong enough anymore. Blah, blah, blah. The reason why the rest of the world laughs at us is because we're killing ourselves. We have the most amount of money, we have the most amount of wealth, and we can't even fucking save our own citizens. We can't even fix our infrastructure. The goddamn diluted build back better Biden uh, Brandon program couldn't even get passed through in our dumbass Congress. We, we are the number one at not giving a fuck. Okay. We're the worst. We're a third world country with a Gucci belt. It's a fucking wonderful theme park. If you are a wealthy person, America is the greatest country on earth. If you're rich enough, if you can afford it. Okay. But if you're poor, it fucking sucks. Yeah, sure, you have better amenities than maybe developing nations that we fucked, okay? But, having said that, you also have to live down the street from motherfuckers who are flexing on you. That is not good. My name is Mike, I'm 59 years old. Bro, this shit is, I'm effing a lot today. It cuts in and out today, I don't know what it is. I never used to have problems. Where doesn't it suck when poor, not trolling, legit question? Countries with higher levels of, of social safety nets uh, are countries where it doesn't suck as bad to be poor. European countries, for the most part. Social democracies. My name is Mike. I'm 59 years old, and I'm a so conservative well. parent. You know, growing up during the 1980s, you know, that was a huge influence on me and it formed my views and the people that I was around is the reason why I'm a conservative parent. I think America- Your generation literally personally is responsible for how fucked the situation is. I mean, God damn, especially you as a still a defender, an avid defender of the kinds of actions that, you're, that the governments that you voted in for took right now. Like you have the benefit of hindsight and you're still fucking advocating for this shit. America should be more middle of the road and not be necessarily more liberal and if anything should like what do you mean america should be middle of the road and not more liberal like what what the fuck can mike be talking about dude america is too liberal in what respect dog god damn dude liberalism is just like liberalism in and of itself is already like uh, you know center right as far as ideologies goes i mean obviously not on the social side guys i know even though you know politics is not a not a a, a, a grid that you can easily define Donald Trump was the president. What do you mean it was not enough? Should be a hint more on the conservative side because we're going to watch our freedoms get extinguished or encroached if we don't guard those freedoms. Like what? What freedom sure have you guarded? Children have a chance to succeed. Can God, I want to know so much. Like what are the freedoms that we're going to be encroaching on? What, what does he mean? I wonder. To be able to have a jalapeno popper at Applebee's. I know what it is. It's a real step forward. I um, actually wished I came up here for the agreeing section because I think I interpreted the definition of safety the same way that you guys did, but after hearing your eyes' conversation, I started thinking about how our American people aren't safe in the face of like imminent like climate disasters that are coming our way and how we don't have the infrastructure to deal with that. I actually very much agree with that because I think we need to define like kind of like what we mean by like we're less safe now. Do we mean like there's more homicides after COVID or like what do we mean? I would say before we got rid of half our military, half our police force, you know, slavery was legal. We halved our military and police force. I am losing my fucking mind. This dude said we halved our police force and half our military, okay? In any other situation, if someone was that fucking crazy, let's say we're watching a basketball game and, and someone just basically fucking blurted out, wow, it's crazy that, you know, there's only five people on the court when there's cl clearly 10 people playing basketball. You'd be like, are you okay? Did, did something happen? W what is going on? And he just said it. He just said it. Because when it comes to politics, you can just lie, okay? You can live in fantasy world, in goo goo gaga world, 
where you just make up your own fucking facts and nobody will look at you and go, you okay? Legal. The Holocaust was legal. So we can look at all of these mass atrocities and say we're doing what's right. Everybody who was a part of the Holocaust government, they were doing what Hitler said. They were doing what was right. So everybody losing their job for not getting vaxxed and all the vax people, you got, you got who's, who can we control? Everybody who get the shot, that's who going to do what we say. The enemies are coming and we don't care about that because we want to care about what color we should wear and pride and critical race theory. It's like no one else cares about that but us in America. That's our problem. I mean, he's not wrong about that. He's right. Yeah, that is true. Except I'm a little confused as to how this, what this has to do with the enemies. The, the, the thing I used to say about COVID in the beginning of COVID is that like, you can view COVID from a NATSEC perspective. From a national security point of view, COVID exposed a significant flaw in Western liberal democracies. And that is that in Western liberal democracies, because of the hyper-individualistic attitude that we have been uh, fed, we have no collective understanding of the collective good and doing our part for something larger and protecting our fellow citizens. And we literally fucking, we, we, get, we got owned by COVID in a way that you did not see in other countries. And the reason why I specify Western liberal democracies and not just a capitalist country, for example, is because there are liberal democracies in, you know, uh, in, in Asia that did significantly better. Australia did significantly better, like unimaginably better. Problem. So you think that talking about sexual orientation and all that kind of stuff takes away from the safety of our country? Who you sleep with has no merit in the real world. What does it matter? Okay, let's just broaden the scope. With the coronavirus pandemic, why did it take weeks for us as a country to mobilize together to fight, to fight the public health crisis that was already affecting the nation? It was a scam to get Donald Trump out of office. It's all fake. Oh my God, this dude's idiocy is, is frustrating me. He is so confident in how stupid he is. Dude, you are surrounded by little kids. Okay, like, I don't know how old they are, actually. They're probably like 16. I'm so old that I think everyone that, like, is 16 to 18 is, like, 12 now. My opinion. I agree with you. I don't think that we could create, or the Democrats could create some international plan, getting all of these scientific communities outside of just the U.S. and even international governments on their side for something that they're just trying to get Trump out of office. I feel like that's heavily ridiculous. Trump was the, was the thorn and nobody saw coming. And they had to find a way to get him out of there. If there's no mail-in vo voting, 100% Trump is the president, president right now. 100%. Yeah, because overwhelmingly mail-in ballots were to Biden. That's obvious. Like, exactly. That's not because mail-in ballots are fraudulent, because mail-in ballots are actually not fraudulent at all. That This election was the safest election in recorded I history. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of videos. So you Thank see you. people with fake ballots. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dude, what the fuck is going on today? Driver, time out. Everything is breaking ballots, today. It's so. really frustrating. This dude's take was so fucking bad that like in recorded history. There's a lot of videos, so you see people with fake ballots. So that's here and there. I'm not. That's partner. just hearsay from random people on TikTok. Are we really gonna like take that as like empirical evidence? It's a personal opinion. Dude, 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 dude. This guy believes in everything that's bad. Okay, just everything that's wrong, everything that's bad, everything is fucking delusional. I don't know what the fuck to do here. Every part of his like. Are we really gonna like take that as like empirical evidence? It's a personal opinion. Yeah, Giga Chad. Uh, sorry, empirical evidence. Guess what? It's my personal opinion that the election was stolen. Oh, cool. So you're a fucking idiot. My name is Parker. I'm 19, and I'm a liberal. My sisters and I have uh, become a lot more liberal, a lot more left-leaning over time. While my parents have stayed a bit conservative. Before, uh, when I was a conservative, I kind of just went off a lot of the indoctrination and propaganda that was spread to me when I was a kid. I grew up on the fact that, oh, we shouldn't have increased taxes because taxes are just negatively affecting us. Personal responsibility isn't what a lot of the decisions people make in society is based on. It's mainly based upon their environments, how they're socialized by their parents, people around them, things like that. My new source is more reliable. Dude, Jubilee needs like fucking communists, dude. I swear to God. They just need straight up like, 
disgusting fucking this is why i don't talk shit that much about gray zone even though they are fucking annoying and they do say like idiotic things from time to time like like we need more fucking actual like you know marxist people to participate in shit like this than the other sides uh, news source when i look at conservative news i see a lot of conspiracies that i don't necessarily agree with and so if everything comes from how do you feel knowing you're some people's entire news source i feel fucking awesome it's a it's a responsibility that i recognize on a daily basis and i think i do a pretty goddamn good job at it okay i shit on the democrats i shit on the republicans i look at fox news i look at cnn i give you the fucking biases that all of these other outlets have okay and it's it's dope you're not gonna I, this is one area okay I'm a dumbass and I admit that I'm a dumbass and I also have biases and I admit those biases all the fucking time. But the reality is if there's one fucking area where I'm confident in, it's that I take this shit very seriously and I try to make it as entertaining and as engaging and as palatable as possible. But I'm honest and this is the one area where it's like, yeah, it's absolutely fucking better than watching Tucker Carlson. You know what I mean? Absolutely better than watching Tucker Carlson. Absolutely better than watching fucking MSNBC. You get to see both here as well. Opinion and just people developing their own ideas, is, it just doesn't seem reliable to me. I feel like the only way we can get unbiased news is in order for news media organizations to stop prioritizing having really vivid headlines that might not necessarily be 100% accurate. I think that starts with putting people over profit. They want the, the biggest story or whatever, and they don't want to actually give the news that would be beneficial to our everyday average Americans. Um, and I think that if we put a lot more um, focus on putting people first instead of um, the big news or the big story, we can change that aspect of society. I agree with you 100%. Like, I, I say the civil rights movement is the civil rights entertainment industry because it's so profitable. Put a police shooting on TV, it's breaking news. Every headline is on every social media. You're selling shirts, you're selling signs. That's so much more profitable than showing me and you shaking hands. The news media is literally capitalizing off the emotions of society. No matter how you feel about it, handle any of your privacy in your house. Why? Because if you can do it on camera, somebody's gonna make a dollar off of it. And that's not fair to you. Young people today what? are too sensitive. Okay, we got to run that back. I did not understand what. Because it's so profitable. Put a police shooting on TV. It's breaking news. The civil rights industry is so profitable. Okay. There is a truth to the commodification that uh, big business engages less, in when it less. comes to like actual radical movements that uh, base themselves uh, as like grassroots mobilization for the betterment of marginalized communities. Percent. And the, the media uh, loves especially when it hits like terminal velocity the media loves covering it endlessly and more importantly than that you get the walmart throwing up the black fist examples right for black lives matter so that is true that is true that's a reality that is definitely something that uh happens but also the underlying principle or the genuine anger that people feel okay the genuine anger that people feel and the things that they want to fucking change are still correct. That doesn't change that reality, okay? That's precisely why you see in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder, execution in the hands of the fucking state by Derek Chauvin, you saw all of these protests, some of which even turned into riots, right? As a consequence of police escalating tensions and not doing their fucking job. And what did we get? Nothing. Walmart threw up a black fist. Every fucking TikTok influencer that loves doing dances and shit turned around and, uh, you know, put BLM in their Instagram profiles. Okay. And what did we get? The immediate, uh, the immediate response from capital owners and capitalist corporations was basically to co-opt this movement and commoditize it or commodify it. And then and then the Democratic Party turned around and said, oh, yeah, we got to do eight. Can't wait. We can't do like defund the police. They bastardized what defund the police actually meant. They belittled it. And then they turned around and basically said, hey, you know, we're we are uh, going to give you a counter called eight. Can't wait instead. And even that didn't pass. And the the watered down version of the demands that the streets were making were not only not heard, 
But even that watered down version that was supposed to be appropriate and passable, that legislation didn't pass either. Joe Biden literally ran on funding the police more, Jack. Every headline is on every social media. You're selling shirts, you're selling signs. That's so much more profitable than showing me and you shaking hands. The news media is literally capitalizing off the emotions of society. No matter how you feel about it, handle any of your privacy in your house. Why? Dude, that's so fucking stupid, dude. How are you going to handle the civil rights movement in the privacy of your house? This guy has to have a YouTube channel, right? Because, like, you don't usually get someone that fucking stupid uh, unless they're, you know, making money off of it or something. Because if you can do it on camera, somebody's going to make a dollar off of it. And that's not fair to you. Young people today are too sensitive. So I think it's a good thing that young people are sensitive. I think today they can be more sensitive than what they probably could have been 30 or 40 years ago. You know, the growing up was- Oh, he's an actor, model, and, uh, and he has a basketball podcast. Yep, there it is. This is like Jubilee is doing what mainstream media does when they go to like fucking, you know, uh, Hitler Mussolini and ask him what their take is. You know what I mean? Or like going to Pinochet's fucking cousin in the aftermath of the Chile election and being like, what do you think about, you know, a socialist being in a position of power? Or when Fox News is like, this is a concerned parent. And then you fucking Google the concerned parent's background. And the concerned parent is like literally a fucking oil lobbyist. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's not just a concerned conservative parent. That is straight up an operative, okay? And that's precisely what this dude is. He is the small fry version of that. He is the internet version of that. And Jubilee, without, you know, looking into the background of a person like this, having this person on, is just straight up doing exactly what fucking mainstream media does regularly. The Berlin crisis, the Cuban Missile Crisis, I mean, we had the threat of annihilation, you know, staring at us several times. And a lot of times I go, you know, thank God John Kennedy handled it. The country. The Cuban Missile Crisis? Why did you put fucking missiles pointing towards the USSR in Turkey? What the fuck do you mean? Everything he just brought up is like America's very own problems that it created. The Berlin Crisis? Fuck you mean the Berlin Crisis? How did that impact you? The Cuban Missile Crisis. Imagine, dude. I mean, dude. we had the threat of annihilation, you know, staring at us several times. And a lot of times I go... The threat of annihilation, dude. What do you mean, oh my God, the death and destruction and annihilation? But of course, when you talk about the actual annihilation, the upcoming annihilation in the form of like, you know, anthropogenic climate change, it's like, that's fake. That's fake. It's not real. Thank God John Kennedy handled it. The country has been spoiled for so long. They're trying to make it so a man can't be a man. And if you don't let men be men, then things start crumbling. Society crumbles, families crumble, and broken homes start happening. And kids need their fathers. So 36% of kids don't have a father. So every boy is, well, my mom is mad at me. My dad don't love me. My dad don't care about me. Maybe I should be gay. Maybe I should be trans. I don't know who I am. And you're yeah, that's, that's how it happens, dude. Yeah. Famously, no one from a good household has ever become gay or trans. Also, becoming gay and becoming trans. This is like 90s era homophobia. You know what I mean? So I'm happy that he's like hitting the classics here. That's a classic. That is 90s era homophobia. That's a, that's a banger. You know what I mean? I don't know who I am. And your father puts confidence in you. No disrespect to anybody, but the younger generation of men are soft. And if we had to go to war, they're not protecting America. There's no better place to be. Bro, what are you going to protect, dude, with your fucking basketball podcast? What are you going to do? You are currently advocating to compromise America further. Even if you were like, even if you were whipped up in like nationalistic fervor and you want to protect America, you'd be an advocate for fucking the vaccines and mass inoculation campaigns. You live a life of fear. So if you spend all of your fucking time on Facebook and like basically fucking slam your head against the wall over and over and over again, you become more of a fear-based reactionary psycho. I can't believe this dude has the audacity to be like, kids these days are soft, which, you know, we are. We do get more cushiony and softer every single day. But like, 
Are you motherfuckers not soft? You're soft as shit. There's nothing softer than crying about fucking mask wearing for approximately 35 seconds before you sit down from the Applebee's counter, okay, all the way to your table. There's nothing softer than that, okay? There's nothing softer than crying because there is a free vaccine that everyone should get so we can move beyond fucking COVID, okay? And not let this viral disease destroy the country after it took almost a million Americans. You're soft as fucking baby butter, dude. Be as, as a black individual or whatever you are in America. Go to the Middle East right now and say you, you gay or you trans and see how they treat you. Oh, is that good? Is that a good thing? Are there no gay or trans people in the Middle East then? No, there are. They're just subjected. By the way, it was extremely racist to, to you know, that's, that's besides the point. But like, are you saying that that's a good thing then? Like, I don't understand. Are you saying it's a good thing when it's happening? What, what is happening there? Because that was your argument that we shouldn't have this happening here. That makes no sense. Also, it completely depends on where the fuck you are talking about in the Middle East. In every single area where there is reactionary uh, conservative uh, politics, but with an Islamic, like you know, uh, Islamic spice to it, is a consequence, a direct consequence of American and Western intervention and destabilization. America and Western nations come in, fuck shit up, the country is destabilized, and then reactionary forces take root, sometimes with direct intervention and help from the United States government, or other times as uh, they are able to present themselves as the forces that will expel the American foreign invaders. Johnny, I'm 32 years old, and I am a conservative parent. My grandfather was an, a no-excuse individual. He grew up in the Jim Crow South, but he worked hard. The, the house that he bought is still in our family today. He had a garden in his backyard. If you step past a certain lot, he got on you. So to watch the men before me who really could have been lynched for stepping out of line, who really could have went through a- Notice how, the, how all the liberals have like middle of the ground, like 50%, 50%, 50%, but the conservatives are 86% right. That tracks with Pew Center uh, studies as well. Conservatives consume exclusively conservative media, whereas liberals most of the time consume both conservative and liberal media, which by the way, I still think is conservative for the record, but that's besides the point. What is this? Ayala has a, Ayala girl has a question for you. If you press the button, the top 10 earners in the world, 10% of earners in the world who hold 85% of the world's wealth will be forced to forfeit their earnings and be given a fixed allowance equal to the 1% Equal to 1% their prior income, their money will be distributed to everyone else proportionally according to the need. What the fuck? Wait, what? Why would you not press that button? What? I mean, to be fair, it's got 13 likes and you guys are dumbasses for linking this to me. Like every CNN MSNBC host to be a Bush administration member, haha, -ha, liberal media, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. In the world, being top percent, top 10% means you make like 10K a year. Yeah, that's idiotic, but I know what she's trying to say, okay? Mixed factuality, news sources may sensationalize. Yeah, this dude thinks COVID was a scam cooked up by the international community to get Trump out, that the election was stolen from Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe, you know, he's got a little bit further, he's gone further than well, just hardship sensationalized for news. not doing what society said. The worst thing that could happen to me because I get a, a mean I tweet pee. or a dislike. So I got to fully embrace who I am. And I know I can create anything with my two hands and feet. I'm Hannah. I'm 17 and I'm a liberal. I really want equality for all. And the liberal um, policies that have been passed side more with my values of equality for those who are on the LGBTQ, those who are on the gender spectrum. Something about conservative parents that I don't like is whenever I come across them, they seem to be very rooted in their ways and not willing to listen to someone who's a teenager like me. They think more like, oh, because I'm older, I have more knowledge, which is not necessarily always the case. Can we have the disagree a step forward? This idea that because men are being raised by women that they're weaker is in my opinion, completely false. Our generation, it's not more sensitive. We're more aware of all these things. Being transgender and gay is not something that is, should be ashamed of or make you feel less 
in today's society, that is why women are fighting for equality, because this idea that because they only have a mom, they're weaker, or because, you know, they're more sensitive, that's, in my opinion, completely false. And I would say in the environment that I grew up in, the teen pregnancies come from girls without fathers. The homicides come from people without fathers. Every girl that I know, if they grow up with a daddy, they get married before they have a kid. Why do they not have fathers? If you want me to be real, because a lot of women make bad choices on the men they procreate with. If you make a bad choice, that's your responsibility. Every bad thing that I did in my life, it was- Oh, okay. I miss so much. I miss so much. Sorry, I gotta run it back. No I was peeing. Individual, he grew Three up in the Jim Crow South, but he worked hard. The, the house that he bought is still in our family today. He had a garden in his backyard. We already saw that story. It's always the case. Whenever I come across them, they a girl. I really want equality for all and the liberals. Look at that, liberals. Liberals get 57%, okay? Leaning in one direction. Conservatives are like 90%. <laughs> um, policies that have been passed side more with my values of equality for those who are on the LGBTQ, those who are on the gender spectrum. Something about conservative parents that I don't like is whenever I come across them, they seem to be very rooted in their ways and not willing to listen to someone who's a teenager like me. They think, more like, oh, because I'm older, I have more knowledge, which yeah. is not necessarily always the I swear your chat's like 70% white. Yes, dude. Twitch as a platform is insanely white. Hello. Yes, Twitch is a deeply white platform. At least the whites in here are more understanding, okay? Every time, every time uh, we someone says this, by the way, there's hella people who are like, that's not fucking true. First of all, it's not 70% white, but... It's definitely overwhelmingly white. Case. Can At we have the Disavia step forward? Solidarity with my favorite mullets. Brief is let's go. This idea that because men are being raised by women that they're weaker is, in my opinion, completely false. Our generation, it's not more sensitive. We're more aware of all these things. Being transgender and gay is not something that is should be ashamed of or make you feel less. In today's society, that is why women are fighting for equality because this idea that because they only have a mom, they're weaker or because, you know, they're more sensitive. That's, in my opinion, completely false. And I would... All right, we'll do a fucking poll later today, okay? We'll do a poll in a little bit. We'll poll chat again. We haven't done it in a long time. Okay? Yeah. We'll poll it. We'll poll it up. Only to find out that 100% of the chat sees the top of the hour ad breaks at the top of the hour, sometimes nine minutes after. In the environment that I grew up in, the teen pregnancies come from girls without fathers. The homicides come from people without fathers. Every girl that I know, if they grow up with a daddy, they get married before they have a kid. Why do they not have fathers? If you want me to be real, because a lot of women make bad choices on the men. Oh my God! Free the turtles. Think of the five. Get the subs. Oh, it's because women make the bad choices, dude. This guy is so. This guy is is so horrifyingly wrong. I don't know how to describe how fucking wrong this dude is. Oh my lord, dude. They procreate with. If you make a bad choice, that's your responsibility. Every bad thing that I did in my life, it was when my daddy was in jail. When my dad was out, and I had my. Wait, so your mom made a bad choice because your dad was in jail? Like, even then, even, again, remember what I said? Conservatives have, like, flawed moral systems, but they don't even make sense within the flawed moral system that they've created. In that situation, where is the individual responsibility? Wouldn't that make your dad a bad person if you believe, like, people go to jail because they're bad people or good people? Which, by the way, that isn't the case regardless. Like, it's wild to me that... A black dude whose grandfather grew up in the fucking Jim Crow South has a take like this that is so far removed from any sort of fucking structural analysis that he is going down. I mean, this is a perfect example of how reactionary brain worms take over some of the more base like realities that you, you experience as a black person, right? Like this dude is, he's black. He grew up as a black man in America, okay? His grandfather was alive during segregation. And instead of applying like any sort of structural analysis, any sort of like fucking admission of systemic racism, he fucking turns around. What I was trying to say is he's so lost in the sauce with reactionary rhetoric that like his own base realities that he's experienced, he is overlooking 
And that misdirection has worked incredibly successfully that he's like blaming women, you know? That's crazy. That's how, that's how reactionary politics operates. To delude you into not seeing these structural inequalities and hyper-focusing on like individual bad actors that are not you in some way, shape, or form. My dad's reassurance, I was a better person. I had one daughter that had to move across the country to get rid of a toxic relationship with somebody that was harming them. Why does the woman have to move across the country? Like, how do you not, re how, how do you not even consider, like, why, why was your dad in jail, bro? What did he do? And for how long? Like, what, what do you think is the reason for why he went for as long as he did? Anyway. Because the man is being toxic. Why can't the man be taught, don't be toxic? Oh, I agree. Women nowadays have to deal with those kinds of relationships the women, the mother knows better, I would say, than the father about that. We're not more sensitive. There's just more opportunities for us to be sensitive. You can say like 15, 20 years ago, there weren't videos of black men being shot by police. She's owning, by the way. Absolutely clapped. That was pretty good. Good job on her. Police all over the internet. Now that that's there, people are more inclined to feel a certain way or take a stance on that topic. Do you think it would be more beneficial to show police also interacting with white guys? Because more white guys get killed than black guys by cops. If you oh God, I'm gonna lose my mind. This dude is killing me. Every time he, I, I swear to God, this motherfucker is shaving years off of my life, dude. More white guys are being killed by cops. Would you show that? Okay, dude, let's show that. I, I, fine, let's, I mean, I agree. I think police brutality is completely unacceptable regardless of the fucking race. What kind of psychotic fucking counter is that? You look at the amount of white people and the amount of black people, there are going to be more white people killed because there are more white people in- Oh my God. Okay, she is fucking slapping. Okay, keep it going. In America, the percentage of black people that are being killed is higher than the percentage of white people. Bro, he is- If they cut this off, they're cowards because you know he's going to be like, black people deserved it. He is going to use- as many words as he can to say black people deserve it. Just because you're pulled over it doesn't mean you have to resist. I mean, they don't just kill oh! Oh! oh my God. Kill you when they pull you over. It's all about based on how you perform as an individual. I've been pulled over and never had a bad interaction in my life. When I was rude, I got snatched out the car. Everything is a personal choice and you can't take accountability for your life and you will forever be a slave. That's not oh my God. 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 Again, conservative dickhead brain yeah if i close my eyes to the reality of structural racism if i close my eyes to the disproportionate targeting and pursuing uh, of cops of uh, in black communities okay or uh, how much cops disproportionately target and pursue black people in general then and and i just like act right okay act white act right you know uh and abide by uh no matter how ridiculous the expectations are then it's fine it's not a real thing La 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 la. Every black person that got killed by cops kind of deserved it. That's what he's saying. It's not true. There are definitely issues on the side of policing. Black Every communities, rights. majority of black communities, majority POC communities are over policed. There. By the way, even in that circumstance, I love that he just like admitted that you know he's been snatched out of a car, and he literally was like, "Cause I was rude and I deserved it." Oh my yeah, god, dude, that boot is num 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 num. As the eggs Benedict of boots, okay? I'm still thinking about eggs Benedict because of Master Chef. Sorry. Mmm, got that Hollandaise sauce on that boot. Mmm. There's larger patrols in black communities. There are police work longer hours in uh, majority black communities. So there's an issue from the policing side as well. Politics has damaged my relationship with a loved one. I'm sure you could relate to this as well, but in the Asian community, there's a lot of anti-blackness. So with the advent of the Black Lives Matter movement this past year, having conversations with my parents were, was really difficult, especially around the nuances of racial justice and sort of like what the movement was fighting for and how to articulate that in like the very closed mindset that my parents had. A lot of my family voted for Trump in the past election, and I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't like to say this, but it- Bro, no matter how fucking biased you are, you have to notice that, like, 
these are incredibly thoughtful, incredibly clever, and very empathetic teenagers. Okay. Thanks for. And the in content. comparison to the fucking barking that you're hearing from the conservative side, like they come across like they got fucking PhDs, dude. Holy shit. Maybe you view their morals a little bit differently, and their willing to adapt and change was so different. And I was. Just this man said the advent of the BLM last year. Okay, bro. Man, shut up. Okay. I mean, he's he's like he's doing his best. Yeah, I, I know, I know. The advent of the BLM. I heard that too. It's it's just like, but overall, you know, they're talking about uh, describing. Uh, like social justice movements to their fucking parents who are not seeing it, you know? Still a teenager. Just, like, shocked because I wanted to understand their side and really talk about it, and I was met with, you're wrong, and we don't want to talk about it, and that kind of really damaged just kind of the way I looked at them. Yeah, I definitely agree, and I also think that it just made me less willing to expend the energy to have Thanks for political or like just like any, any like hard conversations with, with my parents or of other, anyone else in my family. My name is Brithwick, I'm 18 years old and I'm a liberal. I grew up in a low income immigrant household and I think the systems that are in place right now aren't sufficient enough to support people, no, Americans like go. myself or my family. Because my parents were immigrants, uh, I think they were liberal on issues like immigration and things that directly affected them. I'd like to ask to the conservative parents why they don't necessarily listen or adapt their I own beliefs, that. whether political or social, based on the conversations they have with their children and why they're so set in their ways. You know, I read a lot of the tragic stories where family members don't talk to each other anymore. Personally, I think that's sad. Do all my family members vote the same? Let's no. go. Do we have a pretty good idea of how family members may have voted? Yeah. But we actually, we want more of agree to disagree. I'm not gonna not buy you a present for Christmas because you, know, you decided to vote for somebody that I don't like. Give me a break. Families Keep are special. The fight against brain rot. And we've got too many people, as you've talked about, that don't have them. When I took this prompt, I kind of took it more of like, my view of the person changed mm -hmm. different, differently because, not because the way they voted, but because some of their values to me were, like he said, moral values. I agree with what Mike is saying on that end, though, for sure. Um, I, I do think that it's important to keep your family close, obviously. I mean, maybe I'm too fortunate, though. That is one area that I'm incredibly, incredibly privileged on, is that, like, yeah, I have a lot of disagreements. Uh, with respect to politics, with uh, with my with some of my closest family members, with the exception of Marat, who is a Maratist, and that's a entirely separate ideology. But, um, you know, it it it's nothing like. It's ultimately not uh, uh destructive. You know what I mean. Yeah, if they're homophobic or something, it doesn't really work the same. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, okay, it's on my dad can go fuck himself, dude. What? <laughs> dude, I I love you, Chatter. Okay, you did that exact same thing I talk about all the time. This conversation centers around me and my personal lived experiences as a Chatter. Okay. <laughs> Talk. I'm not talking about you. I just said I'm really privileged. This is like where I'm the most lucky. Like, <laughs> I get it. I know that some people's parents are like fucking so dog shit that it's impossible to, to, to you know, deal with them. Values, mm -hmm. and that shows kind of part of their characters. Would you say that morality is subjective to the each individual person, though, or would you say morals are the same across the board? The basic is human equality for all. And so if you don't Teresa, believe that somebody should Carter. have an equality based on their gender, their sexual orientation, or their race, or anything like that, that's a moral, that's a moral problem in my eyes. Because that's a huge thing with the trans and the gay and the LGBTQ and all that whole thing. So I grew up LDS, being Utah, Utah yeah. County, it's like 95% Mormon. 
at eight years old is when you get baptized. And so if you're raised around where 95% of people think the exact same way, I feel like that's too young of an age where you're a child and you don't really know what you're doing. And so where I have a problem with um, you know, the trans or these different things is they're getting kids at like 10, 12 years old and they're- Wait, is he ex-Mormon then? Cause he just said like, indoctrination at an early age is a bad thing if they're trans. He can't turn around and go, indoctrination at an early age is good when you're a Mormon, right? He can't literally be like, I was indoctrinated into the, uh, you know, the, the, the Church of Mormonism at an early age, and that was really good. <laughs> but also, these trans kids are being indoctrinated to transgenderism. Oh, he's saying both are bad, right? Okay, he's ex-Mormon. Okay, uh, it's not the same thing regardless, but I just wanted to check because I, I thought I misunderstood him. Uh, okay. Trans kids are not the equivalent both in political power or even in like how someone is trans versus religious indoctrination works in any meaningful capacity, okay? You're trans or you're not. You're gay or you're not, okay? You're not born Mormon, motherfucker. You're, you learn it. Like, it's just, you know, religious indoctrination. That's kind of weird that he was like, He's like an ex-Mormon, but he's not fucking woke. Like, that, that is strange. Like, he was able to escape the, the grips of religious indoctrination. And, but, then, but then he's like not, he doesn't, you know, translate that liberation to other avenues of life. That's, that's weird. They're pushing him down that path. Who's they? Who's they? Mm -hmm. Who's pushing, who's indoctrinating these kids into becoming LGBTQ? And, uh... Oh, shit, Parker. Get him. Get his ass, dude. Get this fucking ass, dude. God damn. These kids are fucking good, dude. They're fucking... Who, who is that? They're fucking cooking these motherfuckers, dude. Yo, let's go! Et cetera. There's a lot of groups out there. Like? I've just heard that there's it's groups hot. out there. I... <laughs> Yo! Yo! Are you fucking kidding me? He just said, who's they? Are you fucking joking? You just got rolled, smoked, cumstered, and dumpstered by a fucking teenager with a TikTok, bro. God damn. Oh my God. He literally just, he just slapped him. He just backhand fucking slapped him in the face. One question is all it took for this house of cards to fucking fall apart, dude. God damn. All I'm saying is Digimon is better than Pokemon. We gotta run that back. Mm -hmm. Who's pushing, who's indoctrinating these kids into becoming LGBTQ and uh, et cetera? There's a lot of groups out there. Like? I've just heard that there's groups out there. I, I don't know. You, you don't think there's groups out there that do that? No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. He said, who? Name some groups. Name one. A group. Bro, this, by the way, this actually does go to show that you are... I, I'm sorry, people are gonna get mad at me, but like, yeah. in a lot of instances, at the very least, if you're like left adjacent or or closer to liberal values, you, I don't know what it is, you're more open-minded to hearing different perspectives or whatever the fuck it is, but ultimately you're not, there, there's something different that's going on in your fucking brain that is not happening in the mind of a I'm adult home, conservative, okay? These guys have the straight up benefit of living like three X the lifespan of all of these kids, okay? Three of these kids haven't lived a life as long as Mike has, okay? How did you live a whole ass life and get to this point and you're still a dumbass, dude? They're just smarter. Like these, these dudes are just, these kids are smarter, straight up. They're just smarter. Some you're a straight man, so I think it's weird for you to comment on the queer experience and what that's like for someone growing up who's struggling with those experiences. The way you're describing it as indoctrination, people who are, are um, figuring out their sexualities and their queer identities aren't necessarily going to ascribe to the first labels that are put before them. If I'm not mistaken, the brain isn't fully developed until you're 25 years old, correct? Yeah, correct. So I know Dog, yours didn't develop yet, okay? You're 32 and it's still not developed. And I'm sorry, it's never going to, okay? You're conservative. You did this to yourself. I wouldn't be talking shit about brain development, okay?
I know how I used to think at 16, man. I know how I used to think at 21, man. I'm not. He's like, you guys think I'm dumb right now? I was even dumber. <laughs> it's hard to believe, but guess what? I was even dumber than I am currently. That's right. Against kids nice. doing whatever they want, it's just the, the older you get, you change. I got my first tattoo at 15. I'm covered now. If I was a little older, I probably would have waited. When you're young, you're not thinking. What? See, everybody has made a bad choice. And because you stressed out. Bro, how are you going to compare getting a fucking tattoo to like, you know, finding dudes attractive as a dude? Smash, like, like something that is quite literally a part of your existence. An immutable characteristic. So like going and getting a fucking tattoo and saying everybody made a bad choice. The premise there, by the way, is that homosexuality is a bad choice. Like he's not only saying being gay is a choice. He's doubling down and saying it's a bad choice. <laughs> the tattoo said I'm gay. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bad choice if you're not, you know, that's awesome. Out, you go change your gender because you want to try something new once you do it you can't go back the more you throw stuff at kids before they Wait, what do you mean once you do you can't go back is that is that a bit of a silver it's like man if i tasted one dick dude it's over you can't go back you know i i just so i i live with that fear every day of my life okay i saw that arthur show where there was a gay marriage happening and god damn i had to I had to break the television immediately. You know what I mean? Cause like, oh man, if I had watched all 22 minutes of that Arthur Agiprop, I would have been sucking dicks at the gas station. Okay. Delta He's talking about Delta transgenderism ass hat. Even that's not true. Okay. Sorry. You're fucking wrong. Hormone blockers. You can absolutely go back on them. Okay. You could just, you know, put a, put your puberty on pause. So you're not right about that either for the record developed that's indoctrination because you're trying to get them while they're not fully cognitive to know what's going on the old by the way transgenderism yeah dude <laughs> hey what's up guys i'm a marxist leninist transgenderist like, what is what is transgenderism dude is it an ideology like you're just you're turning trans what is the benefit of indoctrinating your child to be different gender like what the fuck exactly that's like the other part of it is that like like they, they act like there's these secret benefits of being trans or something like, and they My did this exact here. same shit with, Happy uh, with, uh, sad. gay people as well. The very same day. arguments launched against trans people. I'm at least old enough to recognize are identical to the same argument, uh, the, the arguments launched against, uh, lesbians and gays and bisexuals back in the day. Okay. Six months of cracking content fog. It's just the exact same. Oh, they're doing it. It's a choice. They're doing it for uh, attention. They're doing it because they get many benefits out of it. It's all the exact same shit. Okay, last time I say because I'm being annoying, but I know Ritwick. Don't know why he called himself a liberal. Like he, ke he keeps theory suggestions on his Instagram. Also, he follows you on Insta and Twitter. Yeah, I think they just make them. I think they make everyone that come on say that they're liberal so that, you know, it's uh palatable to the the point of view of of you know the average amera brained dickhead somebody actually has to tell these people that children are not getting bottom surgery that doesn't matter dude it's not that is meaningless the the intricacies of like uh gender confirmation is not the reason why these people have these points of view okay they have these points of view because they're fearful they have these points of view because they are they're living in a life of fear and someone has told them that this is wrong and immoral and what they know the world as they know it is actually the right way that's why i talk about like transphobia regularly and i think it's probably one area where i've been able to actively convert people away from being transphobic because i talk about uh, openly like my own uh transphobic sentiments in the past as well and where it comes from i understand it i do and most trans people in here understand it too because a lot of trans people, if, go, if you go back far enough in this community, were probably transphobic themselves. They had internalized transphobia. Gender is incredibly rigid in the way that it's described to us and in the way that it's reinforced in our everyday existence. It's a fundamental part of your life and the way you understand the world. And that's constantly been reinforced through culture and through our attitudes. So, of course, when someone says, no, nah, that's actually wrong. You go, what the fuck? Everything I know is wrong? Get the fuck out of here. 
That's crazy. That's why most people's normative position, their starting point is transphobic. And that realization is scary, dude. It's scary. It's like a fucking world changing realization. Now apply that kind of attitude to everything that conservatives believe in. You know what I mean? There's varying different degrees, but transphobia is the one that is like the most powerful because there isn't really a lot of counterculture around it. There isn't really a lot of like material support around it. And also on top of that, uh, it is, uh, your gender is like really important to you and the way you see yourself, the, the gender rules, you know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus, like Asshole. whatever the fuck uh, you, if you have a boy, you have to, you know, give them blue clothing. And if you have a girl, you have to give them per, uh, pink clothing and you can't fucking do, you can't change that. You know, boys can't play with girls toys. You can't wear dresses, all this shit from day one. You're like constantly pumping this out. And of course. That is uh, a terrifying prospect for people who grew up with that uh, as their only reality. And it's very difficult to shake that. Same goes for white supremacist attitudes, okay? You grow up in a white supremacist country. You learn a whitewashed uh, version of history where America is absolved of any sin. And as a matter of fact, even if it has sinned, well, it was necessary. And it wasn't all that bad. But even if it was bad, then, you know, other people have done worse. And uh, it was kind of justified, Right. And it doesn't matter. You can be black and still absolutely get fucking brainwashed by that kind of attitude. Five months, let's go. Same goes for classist points of view. You know, you're rich. You deserved it. You deserve to be wealthy. Meritocracy is real. All of these cultural norms are reinforced through media and all of our cultural consumption. And that's how you get to a point where you believe the things that you fucking believe. Okay. That's how you believe everything you end up believing through social conditioning. But ultimately, never forget that culture is simply a reflection of the material realities that we all exist under. Okay. It's not like culture has the capacity to form new opinions and change the direction of the material reality in and of itself. It's just that it's more so a mirror. Uh, someone pointed, someone used the mirror example. I don't know if, I don't know whose example that originally is. I think it's a, it's a, a, a philosophical argument, but, uh, it's like, it's like looking at the mirror and instead of fixing yourself, you actually clean the smudges on the mirror. Okay. The problem is yourself. You are the problem. And instead of fixing the problem, you're trying to fix the fucking mirror. You can't fix the mirror, fixing the mirror, breaking the mirror or making uh, the mirror clean is not going to change the reality. Okay. And when I say what you are seeing in the mirror is our material realities. It does seem a lot like Gramsci, but I don't know if it actually is. Daisy Cubby, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. The older you get, the more conservative you become. When I got older and I had kids and I had a family, I actually started reading policies. Everything about me changed when I became a father because I had a reason to. And I'm sure you would agree with that. Yeah, as I've gotten older and the environment we're in right now, Okay, well, yeah, you guys both just got dumber, I think. I feel like they're trying to cancel the Constitution. They're trying to cancel Christianity. I mean, most teenagers are liberal. I was, I was liberal when I was teen. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Culture is liberal. So mm -hmm. hey, when you're younger, you're going to be a part of culture. Right. When you're older, you're trying to raise your family. You don't have a time to care about what LeBron James said or who did that. Just when you mature, you value what... That's so funny that he says that when, like, conservatism is, like, 98% clutter, Okay. Liberalism, too, for sure, especially in America. Like, if you are a politics understander oh, in America be. and you find you consider yourself to be a Democrat or a Republican and you're not like the, the average person who's like, I don't know, I don't give a shit, they suck. I'm too busy, you know, grilling for fuck's sake. If you're not one of those guys, then you 1000% are busying yourself, keeping your brain occupied with monotonous, idiotic, back and forth, inconsequential culture war arguments. Okay. So him saying this as a conservative man, let alone a basketball podcast haver is hilarious. Four months. Love you, buddy. You literally talked about fucking vaccines and the American military being under threat and half the police force and half the army actually, uh, you know, losing their jobs. The consequence of like vaccines, that's like, that's all either made up or small culture war issues that somebody else told you you should fucking worry about. What's around you? My name's Sean. 
I'm 36 years old and I'm a conservative parent. My dad's kind of my idol. I've seen him basically build a very successful life and seen how simple he's lived his life through prayer and through just basic conservative principles. Being raised up LDS or Mormon, I saw a lot of just judgment and so I don't necessarily believe that you know you have to be in, in a religion Holy shit. but I do Makes believe in, in prayer. 100% right wing prayer. I've been all across the board as far as the way my life Rainbow Bun 623 thank you for the 10 gifted subs it's gone and centrist normie thank you for the 5 gifted subs by conservative values building off what you're saying about like teenagers we're right. a different generation and so we view the world differently and I think that's probably why you've seen more teenagers be liberal because we just view the world that way, but I don't think it has anything to do with it. No, my generation, I was liberal too when I was a teenager and all my friends were too. And when you're a teenager, life is fun. It's just totally, you kick it, you party. You, I, so that's what I'm saying, I get the teenage as you grow. Yeah, and then I realized I could get the bag. I saw Candace Owens, oh my God. And I was like, damn, I could do that shit, you know? And I decided I'm no longer liberal. Fuck this liberal bullshit. Also, my generation is kind of funny. You're 32 years old, brother. What the fuck do you mean your generation? We are not that far removed from their generation. Bro, you, you either can run away from responsibility or embrace responsibility. When there's real things going on, you start looking at life a little different. Bro, conservatives have never embraced responsibility a fucking single fraction of a moment in their entire lives. Why do they always say this? Bro, you are literally not in the party of individual responsibility. That's not a thing, okay? Conservatives love crying to the fucking mods, love crying to the referee as much as they claim liberals do. And liberals certainly do it as well. I hate this fucking argument, dude. It's so annoying. You literally are just making stuff up too. At least liberals, when they're fucking crying to the system, they have like a reasonable assertion. Okay, they have a reasonable premise that is rooted within truth, which is grounded in reality, that like a marginalized group is being harmed uh, in a particular way. Conservatives cry to the fucking mods about completely made up shit. They find new ways to get upset. Do liberals also go too far? Absolutely. All they hyper focus on is cultural issues and it's fucking annoying and they're really annoying in the way that they constantly want to center themselves around the fucking conversation. Their refusal to look at the structural inequalities is very frustrating. They are so hyper focused on electoralism without any sort of like uh, other avenue or opportunity to fucking uh, create momentum. They lack a materialist root uh, in understanding the way civilizations have formed and and how that impacts contemporary understandings. All of that is true for liberals as well, okay? And it's a fucking deeply frustrating reality. And sometimes, like I said, they go way too far. They step in front of solidarity. They make themselves look silly. But they're still, in its root, in its foundational principles, coming at it uh, with an understanding of empathy and coming at it uh, from the right side of the argument at the very least. They don't take responsibility for any racism, genocide, forever wars, colonialism, nothing. They justify not taking responsibility for much. They've, yeah, I mean, liberals don't take responsibility either. Don't get me wrong. It's just like. Versus when I was young, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about corporate gains tax. And I didn't know about my stock account. And I didn't know that I can, all these things that I didn't know when I was a kid. I love this man in a lot of ways, actually, because he is the meme. He is the, we're going to the fucking moon guy. Okay. In his mind, he straight up thinks. Unironically. That he's, you know, he, he straight up believes that he is, he's killing it. Like, he is a winner in this system. He has won in this fucking system. Because he has a, he has a fucking Robin Hood account. It's when people are generally talking about taxing the rich more, they're talking about the top 400 billionaires that are literally paying a lower effective tax rate in taxes than the middle class. He said corporate gains tax, by the way. And what he actually meant was capital gains tax. But, you know, that's probably just, he misspoke. The top four, the top four hundred billionaires. All these things that I didn't know when I was a kid. It's when people are generally talking about taxing the rich more, they're talking about the top four hundred billionaires that are literally paying a lower effective tax rate in taxes than the middle class. The top four hundred billionaires paying an effective tax rate of eight percent. That's obviously not a fair share, and I think obviously everyone can agree here that they should be paying at least a fair share, right? How do you increase taxes on someone's assets, though? That's oh, most of those billion. Wait, what do you mean? Do you own a house? Yo, people literally think like. 
people think like, oh, if you're if their assets, they're magical, they're untouched. First of all, you literally said capital gains tax. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Okay. Secondly, like, how do you fucking uh, pay your taxes? How do you fucking pay your taxes if you if you you know bought too much shit? Let's say you're gonna have to fucking liquidate a little bit. This has like, I'm sorry, but this has like, I made fucking sixty five thousand dollars this uh, this past year. So now I'm actually in the top 1% energy reeking, okay? Of that kind of weird attitude. Like, oh man, I'm fucking some sort of tax on property. This dude's on something. No, I'm not even saying increased property taxes. I'm saying that there is a way to identify the earnings and gains that you have made in that year and, and mathematically figure out a better number that you have to be taxed at, okay? You do this for property values all the fucking time. For the record, you, you do this already. Like there is a way to tax assets and asset and the and the increase in uh the increase of the value of an asset that you own, a physical asset that you own. Unrealized capital gains is how they're specifically trying to do it now, but it would be through long-term capital gains because a lot of the people who are paying those taxes, Dude's they're paying killer. capital gains tax rate. There's also tax loopholes that have been lobbied into Congress by Should big corporations and big businesses lobbying politicians to get whatever they want. So if you get older and you work yourself off... Oh, he just educated him. Like, he literally said, how? And Parker was like, this is how. And let's see, let's see what his reaction is. Oh, my God. Big businesses He's about to just go, let's go, Brandon, and walk out. He's going to, like, fucking flip the table politicians Six to get whatever they want so if you get Let's older and you work yourself off you become a multimillionaire. you deserve to pay more because other people didn't work as hard yes. as you but it's not because other people didn't work as hard as me it's because we as a society want to give everyone access to things like basic necessities like healthcare, education thank you rudimentary like for the thing have, have an equal opportunity we don't have that right now you can have equal but opportunity of a baseline but the outcome good. would still be different because every individual is going to work that's fine but we don't have an equal opportunity to the baseline oh my god parker's about to pop level, off obviously right, yeah. right. So I think that's where we are in society. I was able to pull it off. I graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA. I don't have a college degree. So the only limits are the limits you place on yourself. That's just my perspective. Wow, what a productive conversation. Dude, 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 dude. All three of these dudes are, I mean, the dudes, all three of them are fucking killer. They were great. They're actually great. At first I was like a little annoyed because they were like, oh, I'm a liberal, I'm a liberal. But I think that's just like a jubilee thing. You know what I mean? Like you have to be a lib liberal. You have to consider yourself a liberal, I guess. But but straight up, pop the fuck off, dude. America is the best country in the world. I think despite all of our challenges and problems, when you look at all the other countries of the world, everybody is still trying to come here. The way I can talk out loud, the way I can feel myself, the way I can express myself fully as an individual. America is the best country if you're rich, obviously. It, it straight up is. There's nothing comes near it, right? It's a fucking, it's a Disneyland theme park for you if you're wealthy. Okay? The only other exception is even if you're not very wealthy, it's still kind of a theme park if you're a fucking idiot, okay? Because, like, there's so many other fucking morons in this stupid, idiotic country that, like, you feel good. You're like, yeah, I got solidarity with my idiots. Actually, society, we want to design society around, you know, class solidarity and, and build a dictatorship of the proletariat. Meanwhile, we should have been building a dictatorship of the fucking idiots, the dinguses, the dummies. That's what they've been doing this whole time. It ain't many places black men can go do that outside of America. Three years ago, when I got into the court systems and the different rights taken away from me and government control and government power. And so when you have that stuff stripped away from you and you realize most other countries uh -oh. don't have the freedom that America has. America has been the greatest country ever. And I, and I think... It Wait, he went through the court system? Divorce court, right? He, he's probably talking about divorce court. No shot. Shouts out to all the conservatives that watch me every day. You have every opportunity not to be like this. Okay, you can change. You can learn a little bit. You can be open-minded. But also, the other reason why they think this way is because their idiocy creates this fucking blind spot where they feel like, like, I feel like conservatives are just like Americans in general look at the planet and when they stare at like a map of the planet, the area of like Western liberal democracies that are social democracies Nine in months. Europe, 
when they're just carved out. It's blank. Out. He's like, I can't see this. What's in the middle of this map? There's nothing. It's like in the mind of an American, there's only two countries. America, okay, Mexico, Snow Mexico, which, of course, usually doesn't exist either. You can't even think about Snow Mexico. Um, and, and, you know, El Salvador and, and all of the other developing nations that we fucking destroyed. Okay? And China! They just, like, completely forget that there are other countries that already have robust social safety nets that are functioning social democracies. Okay? Snow Mexico? Yeah, I said. Yeah, you got South Mexico... And then you got Northern Mexico, Snow Mexico. I'm calling Canada Snow Mexico. It will continue because of a lot of good people that stand up for the right things. I think I would like to ask the question, what is America the best at? I think we just was talking about the freedoms that we have here versus what they don't have in other countries. So what about places in Scandinavia that actually have higher amounts of freedom? They have better democracies than we do here, higher quality of life, higher median income. They have healthcare systems that are more efficient, that take care of everyone in their population, more access to education. But when you look at- Bro, they will never, they, they're not gonna call Parker back. He's just destroying these people. Just, it's fucked up. Actually, I feel bad now. I, I feel bad for the older generation. I mean, Mike is dead now, for the record. Like, RIP Mike, his heart gave out because Parker fucking destroyed him. F's in the chat for Mike. At the big picture, everybody wants to come here. Millions of people are not trying to get into Scandinavia. Why? That's literally not true. If they had the opportunity to... First of all, that's not true at all, dude. See? Notice how I... Yo! Notice how I fucking said... They just don't know anything about Europe. Notice how I said they don't know anything about Europe. There you have it. What a psychotic take. That is so not true. That is absolutely not true. It's not true. It's false. Complete falsehood. Because we have more opportunity than any other place in the world. We don't even make the top 25 in women equality. But we have a better opportunity to do something about it compared to other countries. And, and I would love it. Dude, people, uh, EU boys get mad at me for my EU takes sometimes. Especially whenever I talk about like EU racism. Right? But God damn, dude, the average American and their understanding of like Europe, European countries, European democracies is like non-existent. Like there is no, it just... It's just an empty space, an empty vessel for you to add whatever talking point you want to. Especially American conservatives literally are just like, what do you mean? Uh, uh, well, months. Norway is, is uh, there's no one that wants to live there. That's why we're better. Nobody wants to live there. Even the Norwegians, they're fucking, they're leaving in droves, brother. Remember the K-Kona guy I argued with? The K-Kona guy that I had like an impromptu debate with at, uh, I think it was PAX East. Old heads will remember this. Um, the guy who is the K-Kona emote is actually a K-Kona. Like, his point of view is, like, very reactionary, very Republican. And he famously told me that uh, countries where they have free college education are on fire. And I was like, well, okay, do you think Germany is on fire? And he said, yes. Uh-oh. Okay, there's definitely like an well, issue with my computer, I think. German state stand as a stark warning for the patriots among us. I think there's an issue with my fucking computer. It's not even just like Well, it just keeps popping off at times whenever like my my bitrate drops too. So I think it might be my GPU maybe. So as I was saying, so I had a I had a debate with the guy K Kona. With the K Kona guy and he with a straight face, told me, like, you know, yeah, here it is, the sign, you know, that's K-Kona, and then we debated, and, you know, we had an argument, and he straight up, with a straight face, told me that Germany is on fire. Why? No, they're actually not, question. because they're, they all want free everything. Well, so they're not paying my wife works in healthcare, and I do. you wouldn't believe how many people come and here for practice other country, they just get free healthcare, get, and then leave, so they don't have to pay it happens. Like you're pregnant, and you're like, I'm trying to have a, I'm trying to have a baby as quickly as possible. 
it's still you can come here okay the right. overwhelming the when you look at the numbers and I, this is something that i have studied this is something that i know emergency room care it only makes up 0.09 percent of overall uh, overall healthcare expenditure so when you look at actual studies conducted by the cato institute the right-wing think tank libertarian uh, but when you look at actual numbers, you realize that immigrants, pound for pound, undocumented citizens, spend infinitely less on health care in the United States than anyone else, than natural born citizens. The reason why, or they're, they're less costly, and the reason why is because they deny, they're denied access. They can't go and get like my primary question, care physicians. They, but my question for you is Move on. Immediately moves on. Uh, I want to find the Germany part. That was really funny. He like straight up said Germany is on fire. That's what I'm asking. How does Germany do it? How do you think Germany does it? That's what I'm asking. How does Germany do it? Germany subsidizes their public education oh, through taxes. Oh, my God. Exactly. Like, yeah. Wait. And that is not good for their economy. It's, it's Have you been to Germany lately? Wait, you think Germany's economy? Yes, of course. I'm gonna give you your Have you seen the middle I think to lower class in Germany? Yeah, they're not in good. They're not in it. horrible. First of all, it's not horrible. They're still doing much better. They're still, they still have social safety nets. They're still in a much better situation than the American middle class is. But it's also a much smaller middle class. We, again, it's apples to oranges. Right? Wait, what do you mean it's a much smaller? Numbers of people. But you just said that. But these are scalable economies. They're not scalable economies. Of course yeah. it is, because so if we move the more money the US, that you generate. Wait, wait, if we move everyone from Germany, from the U.S. the way they sit now in their social economic status, mm -hmm. move them to Germany the way they are now, Germany would be able to support all of that. Um. Most likely, yeah. I doubt it. Wait, why because do you... I mean, it's a drastic... It's a hypothetical where there's like a, a drastic transformation. This is what I'm trying to it's say. It's not I, even comparable, to but... I don't disagree with you, but what I... To the German middle class is non-existent. It's on fire. Why dude, every time you try to counter the dude, he changes the framework. How do you argue with that? I don't know what the fuck to do in that situation. It's just like... When someone interrupts you when you are speaking in an argument, yeah, I mean, this is not like a fucking actual debate. This was just impromptu. We were having a conversation. Kind of German middle class is on fire. This was in 2020. This was at PAX East before COVID like full blown popped the fuck off. March 9th is when it uploaded. But I think it was like all the way back in February. Disagree with is the numbers. You cannot tell me Turkey this when Turkey's numbers do not match anywhere near with the U.S. I mean, Turkey is a pretty big country, and it's it a is, lot but poorer, it's nowhere near, and it's a lot poorer than the United States, which is why it's I'm saying that the a poorer country can be able to do it. Though. Like as many people are trying to get into the U.S. Okay, but, the size of the U.S. Okay, right? I, I look. Do I think that immigration is a problem? In the way that it currently is, no, it no, always I, has been. no, I don't think it's a it's a problem in the way that it had it, 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 the po the way that it is is a problem exclusively because immigrants don't have the same rights. Therefore, licorice bitch, thank you for the five. Give they the are an, a constantly repopulating pool of labor that business owners, both Democratic and Republican, well, can take that. care of. They, I mean, I take advantage of rather, well, I disagree. and that depresses the wages. And that depresses the wages for the American working class that are also made up of immigrants as well, uh, overall, just like your parents were immigrants, right? So the way to deal with that... By the way, that's why I always say I'm the most consistent motherfucker, despite the fact that I think people that like constantly are searching for consistency in arguments or whatever the fuck are silly bitches, okay? But you will look back at things I've said uh, in 2020. You, you can look back at things I said all the way back in like, like when I first started. And the, the arguments are going to still be the same. I've said this th same thing a million times fucking over. Um, I think Hassan pre-watched that, uh, this video. Help, I am German middle class and VR burning. <laughs> Little did he know you were about to buy a billion dollar mansion. Why is he so quiet when he agrees then raises his voice when he disagrees? Because he's agreeing with a libtard. Uses Germany as an example, then says can't use Germany as an Almost example. By the way, thank you, Perks zero five seven eight. After eight twenty one, but before COVID, the, the way to deal with that isn't by saying we're going to make it harder for people to come in because it's almost impossible to actually do that unless unless you subjugate them to a tremendous amount of cruelty, which I don't think you want. 
Right. But I, exactly. I don't think that we are, to be honest. You don't think separating children from their parents is in, an incredible they amount of cruelty? On the record, they it's separate like, children from their parents when the parents have a record or they're not supposed to be with their parents. No, that's I've not been true. to an ICE detention center. My, my neighbor actually works for them. Wait, that's not true at all, though. There's, the news is only showing you what you think you guys but want I'm to see. Not, that's but I'm not. But not only do I. Have you been to an ICE detention center? Not only do I cover have you the been news. To an ICE detention no, center? but I work with immigrant activists every day. I and literally I work, work with, with these immigrants that have come over the border with no problem. I mean, I've been to those detention centers. I know, kids are with but them. okay. Again, you, I live who in do you think? Again, this is the best part of the argument because he goes, "My neighbor," and and again, object permanence, right? Like conservatives literally will will get. This is the this is the highest level of conserver brain. Okay, when you have conserve when you have conserver brain, it's like the closer you are to the anecdote, the better your argument is. And the only way that you could defeat this man is if you were like separated from your parents as an immigrant. You know what I mean? And even then he would find a way to be like, well, you probably deserved it. But like, it's just like leveling up anecdotes. Oh, my neighbor is an ICE agent. Oh, okay. Got it. Percent Sunday. But whenever I talk about my own personal experience, like growing up in Turkey or whatever, he's like, well, it doesn't matter. Turkey's not comparable. Germany's on fire. His neighbor is not an immigrant, by the way. His neighbor is an ICE agent. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Europe to open their borders the way we have and see if you can get people from other parts of the world to do. Why don't you let all the immigrants into your $3 million house? I did. They're called my family and myself. Tell me. You mass migration to Europe. I was going to mention Scandinavian countries as well, but I think it's also important to address that Scandinavian countries are very like homogenous, like, racially, socioeconomically. Uh -oh. They don't face the same geographic diversity that we have. What you were mentioning with the fact that we have the opportunity to... Don't do that. Don't bring that. That's not an argument. That's not a good argument. That is a bullshit argument. Plenty of countries that are more ethnically diverse uh do not have uh the the issues that the united states of america has you let xqc in your house as well yeah i did i did let that immigrant into my house right what like women inequality like why is that not happening rewind one video you missed gold from mike wait what did i miss our quality of life higher median income education and to get into scandinavia why because we have more opportunity than any Three other place in the world we three. don't even make the top 25 in women equality but we have a better opportunity to do something about it compared <laughs> yeah mike is right we literally do have a better opportunity than every other country on the planet to do whatever the fuck we want what do i always say the reason why i love america is because it has so much promise okay it could be the greatest nation on the planet. The greatest nation of all time. It, we just refuse to do so. We just refuse to act on it. We have all of the power. We just don't want to do anything about it. So much worse than a nation that suffers because of external factors like colonialism, imperialism, you know, economic imperialism in the form of the IMF or the World Bank that wants to do better but can't we can do better but won't and i get extra angry about that in my opinion that's so much Part worse the countries and, and i would love it for europe to open their borders the way we have and see if you can get people from other parts of the world to do mass migration to europe that first of all that is already happening as a consequence of like the refugee crisis and secondly we don't have open borders what the fuck is he saying we don't have open borders, dude. We took like 17 Syrian immigrants, bro. What the fuck is he talking about? We literally took 17 Syrian refugees, bro. 17. Okay? And this idea that like mass migration or uh, having a, a less restrictive immigration uh uh, procedure is going to lead to like literally fucking floods like waves of people escaping conflict that we have caused by the way is insane okay it's psychotic just 
even open borders itself does not actually mean you're opening up the fucking floodgates, okay? There's still a process in, in making sure that people that are coming in don't have a fucking criminal uh, background that is like super severe, anything like that. Obviously, okay? Nobody wants you to just like uh, murder someone and then escape into America because, hey, open borders. Like, that's not how that works. You can only do that if you're a billionaire, okay? And you killed like a sex worker or something. The left literally only wants murderers to enter the country. I was going to mention Scandinavian countries as well, but I think it's also important to address that Scandinavian countries are very like homogenous, like racially, socioeconomically. They don't face the same geographic diversity that we have. What you were mentioning with the fact that we have the opportunity to write what like. Of course you can you have open borders. You argued about families being separated. Why do they get separated? Because they cross the border illegal. If anyone can walk past your border, then it's open borders. Dude, you are a fucking idiot, dude. The only reason why, like, that doesn't happen in a similar capacity to the fucking England is literally because, like, they don't have a physical boundary with a country. Like, they don't have an immediate physical boundary. Are you stupid? Also, the concept that you are describing... Okay, dude, I gotta fucking put my... I gotta take this shirt off for this one. Hold on. Boom! Look at the t-shirt! Look at the t-shirt. What does the t-shirt say? Read that shirt. It says, every border implies the violence of his maintenance. It's a made up concept. What you are describing is legalese, okay? It's a made up legal distinction that you are referencing. And also you're not even knowledgeable on the concept that you speak on. Those people that are crossing the border into the United States are actually exercising a legal right to asylum seek in this country. Okay? It is their legal right to seek asylum in the United States. They can do that. Problem is, we round them up and separate them from their kids. Specifically. Specifically as a deterrence measure. Admitted by the Republican Party at the time. Anyway, let's keep going. Like women inequality, like why is that not happening? It's because the way our democracy is set up, our Congress is literally in a gridlock right now, as it has been for so many past sessions of Congress. We aren't getting anything productive done. The opportunity we have here is incredible, and I'm very happy that I live here and not somewhere else, but we are so focused on, oh, America is the best, that we don't look at these other countries and say, why are all those people so happy, and what is that, and how can we incorporate that into our society? I mean, I'll say, like, I, I think diversity is good. I think diversity of thought, diversity of pain, it, it's super helpful. Um, we, it's really easy to get clogged up into this group thing. So I don't expect anyone else to agree with me or feel the way I feel. Yeah. I just expect you to respect my right to feel this way. I respect your right to feel this way. And we keep it moving. No, you don't. No, you don't. I agree. I couldn't agree more, actually. Why the fuck is the American brown kid anti-multiculturalism? I don't think he is, but he wanted to come across as like understanding and bring up hom um, homogeny. 12 months, zero. Homogeneity. I don't know how you say it. Whatever. Like he, he wanted to bring up the lack of diversity in Norway as like a good talking point, and it's not. It's a fucking stupid one. It's a dangerous one too. I think America's best quality is is diversity, straight up. You want to eat fucking more. jelly deals, dude? Is that what you want? You want boiled chicken and boiled peas and boiled carrots on the side? Is that what you fucking want? Huh? Is that what you want? You want jelly deals, bruv? This is beautiful. Jelly fucking eels, bruv. And then motherfuckers talk like, uh, you know, oh, it's homogeneity. Yeah. Yeah, that's why West Virginia is doing real well. You know what I'm saying? You know, 93% white, dude. 93% white, West Virginia is. Literally one of the fucking poorest states. What's up with that? And uh, the problem is you can't even see the demographics in Europe in a similar capacity because they don't calculate it in the same way. 75% of Norwegian demographics or 75% of Norway is, is, is uh, ethnic Norwegian, right? But that includes black people as well. And all other kinds of races in it. So what's up, dude? 
What's going on, man? I don't understand. West Virginia seems to be fucking white enough, right? Is it not white enough? Are you going to purge the 3% black people and the mixed race people and the 0.80% Asian people in order to finally make sure West Virginia is going to be the mountain mama state that it deserves to be? Is that how it's going to work? Or do you think there are underlying structural problems and material inequality that is baked into the system that is the reason why the Appalachian gets absolutely fucking cumstered by this capitalist, exploitative, oppressive structure that does not give a fuck what your background is when it fucks you, only cares about what class you're from. Not white enough, right? That's why. West Virginia is the whitest state? Holy shit. No, dude, are you kidding me? America is white as fuck, brother. There West Virginia is not the whitest state. It is one of the whiter states, though. It's the closest you're going to get to a white ethno state, okay? Anyway, let's finish this video awesome, real quick. Awesome, that's a wrap.